Saruan dulu nak kalau kau ni radio Fiji One dan Tommy Vicky nak bunga ni binaanu. Ni sambul benak kan? Nangono baru tak ni orang seru nangono ni dia koma lalu. Ni sambul benak kan? Oya wa meli kilangi. Ninge nama kita mana nunggu bengkel ramai. Mai nama ni tiki nawa rombuka. Ena rua kita nawa nak kalau kau nangono ni orang mana dia sana. Waki na wano na ngona ni Rono Sere Ena Radio Fiji One na ndomo ibiti na vunga ni binyanu yanu On FBC News, police investigate death of a 12-year-old in Samambula. Ten days and still no word, RFMF helped detain soldiers' families keep it together. And Sudalpa leader declines live debate with Fiji First Leader. Hello and welcome to FBC News, I'm Amrita Priyadarshni. Police are investigating the death of a 12-year-old girl whose body was found by her father in their home in Samambula Suva this morning. Police are yet to ascertain the circumstances surrounding the child's death. However, initial investigations revealed that the child was found lying motionless in the house by her father who then rushed her to hospital. The child was pronounced dead on arrival at CWM Hospital. Police say she was alone at home at the time of the incident with her mother at church and her father out for a haircut. Police spokesperson Anna Naisoro has confirmed to FBC News that the cause of the death remains unclassified with investigations continuing. Fiji's actual economic growth in 2013 surpassed expectations, recording a 4.6% GDP growth which was much higher than the 3.6% forecast. Based on actual GDP figures provided by the Bureau of Statistics, the economy performed much better than forecast, with a number of industry groups recording significantly higher growth than expected. The three major groups which significantly contributed to the high growth include the financial and insurance industry, the forestry industry and the transport and storage sector. The financial and ins insurance industry performance rose by 11.1 percentage points due to higher receipts of insurance premium and improvements in the pension industry. The forestry industry recorded a growth of 10.9 percent due to increases in pine and mahogany production and transport and storage grew by 10.1 percent driven mainly by an increase in air transport activity. And moving on to elections, the candidate who wins the most votes of the 248 contesting the general elections could be Fiji's next Prime Minister. According to one academic, the proportional representation electoral system favours political parties over independence and is as much about popularity as it is about broad representation. Maggie Boyle has more. Pre-poll voting began earlier this week across the country in remote rural areas. With a new electoral system in place, FPC News spoke to Professor Richard Herr at the University of Fiji to explain how it works. Under the uh, proportional system, uh, as long as you cross that 5% threshold, you'll get a seat. Now that means that the diversity of party representation in the parliament ought to be broader. And of course the broader it is, the more likely it is that we go to coalition. Herr says it's a numbers game and irrespective of the leadership of a party, the most voted for could win a seat in the new parliament. The voters decide, the electoral system says, people will be elected in the order in, of the votes that they get. With 44 women contesting the elections, we asked her if a gender balance in the new parliament is possible. In the first instance, uh, all 44 women might be elected if they are amongst the 44 most popular candidates in the country. So the first objective for the women candidates, obviously, is to get as many personal votes as they can. He adds it's a tougher race for independents compared to political parties. If you're an independent, that's the same threshold as if you were a party. But the parties will have multiple candidates aggregating votes, which means that for them it's easier. Pre-poll voting will end on the 15th of September. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. The headquarters of a political party was broken into late Friday and confidential documents related to their manifesto were stolen. One Fiji P Party General Secretary, Siteveni Kalo, says initial police investigations have confirmed the robbery could have been sabotage. We reported it uh, to the police, the, the Lamy police station, on, on Thursday morning. Uh, they've had teams come in and they've done 
uh, investigations. Um, they think that uh, it's not your average uh, robbery because there were other things in the office that would have attracted people who are out to uh, steal things. You know. Kello says despite the robbery, the party is continuing their election campaigning with their 13 candidates. Police confirm the incident and investigation are ongoing. Members of the Republic of Fiji Military Forces will be casting their votes tomorrow. RFMF Commander Brigadier General Mosese Tikoetonga says the elections will also indicate an end to the military reign in governing the country. In a thanksgiving service at the QEB in Nambua today, Tikoetonga thanked the wives and mothers of the soldiers for their relentless support over the years. Vosita Kotoiwasawasa reports. The military commander says there has been a lot said over the years on the role that the military played in trying to get the country to where it is today. I know for all you wives, you will all know of the hardships over the years. Many went against the military and their families for what we did for the betterment of our country. Some were verbally abused and some lost their lives in our quest to improve our nation. Tikoi Tonga says the incidents that affected the military over the years are a testament to where it is today, more solid and united in moving forward. Many at times we were on the verge of giving up. There were times where we felt unsure and not secure, but we have managed to get things done. We have changed our country, and we now know that our country is better than before. I thank all of you, the members of the RFMF, especially to the wives and mothers of our soldiers for seven years of hardships that you went through. No one knows it better than you and our God. Tikwe Tonga also took the time to encourage the men and women at the combined church service this morning to continue to pray and have faith for the 45 men in captivity in Syria. He says there has never been a time where the nation came together in prayer for those held hostage. The power of those prayers and the power of faith that we have in the military, I know that these men will be returned safely to us. Tikwe Tonga reiterated that the military family must continue to remember those in captivity and especially their families during this time. Vasita Kotiwasawasa, FBC News. Fiji Military Forces is doing its utmost in ensuring that the families of the 45 detained peacekeepers are looked after well. RFMF Commander Brigadier General Mosese Tukoetonga says what the families need at this stage is reassurance that they will see their husbands, fathers and sons again. Eleanor Turangai View reports. The last time Eta Nambotilama spoke to her husband, Lance Corporal Waisia Nambotilama, was last Wednesday a day before the Fijian peacekeepers were taken captive. He had one request for her and their only child. He wanted us to recite St. Michael the Archangel's prayer and he told us to be strong for him. It's 10 days now since Lance Corporal Nambotiloma and his 44 other comrades' location was last known. It's four days now and no word has been forthcoming from the rebel group holding them captive. The only thing Etta Namboti Loma can do now is to be strong for her husband and their daughter. Waisia, we know you are being held captive and we know and believe that we will see you again. RFMF Commander Brigadier General Mose Siti Kuitonga says the affected families need reassurance so they can cope with the situation at hand. And some of them come back with a story uh, from their neighbor. Some of them comes back with a story of something they've read in the social media. And it's created a, a tension within them. Eh? Um, and that's something that we want to correct. And that's why we're talking to all of them, uh, is to give them the full briefing and to reassure them of... Um, uh, of what the truth really is, eh? and some of them may be hard to solve. The RFMF is visiting affected families to help them deal with the situation. The commander is asking the public to help the families as they go through this difficult time. Eleanor Turangaiviu, FBC News.
still to come on FBC News, thousands of miles away from home, Chinese communities celebrate National Day and Moon Festival in Suva. Radio Fiji 2, देश की धरकन पर आप पर स्वागत है बच्चों की दुनिया में हमेशा की तरह आज भी हम आपके लिए कहानियां और कविताएं लेकर आए हैं और बच्चों आप हमें कॉल भी कर सकते हैं नमस्कार मैं हूं पल्लवी रेडियो Fiji 2 देश की धरकन पर मंडे टू फ्राइडे 3 से लेकर 4 बजे तक बच्चों की दुनिया में और 4 से लेकर 7 बजे तक मस्तानी शाम के सफर में शामिल रहिए मेरे साथ Great words there from Lucky Dube and Babana. I hope you enjoyed that number. Different colors just for you. On Gold FM, only the classic hits. Ruby's with you on the center show. Well, thank you so much for the sweet company. This is Alana Miles, one of my favorites, and Black Velvet for you. Hi there. Join me on the center show every weekday from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. for the best sounds on Gold FM, only the classic hits. Thank you for joining us. The Sadalpa leader has backed down on her challenge for the Fiji First Leader and Prime Minister of Warenge Bainimarama to appear with her on live and national television. Rote Mumu Kepa issued the challenge a couple of weeks and ever since then, FPC TV's For the Record show has been busy trying to get the two leaders together for a live debate. The Fiji First Leader took up the challenge and made himself available for the debate next week. But after some initial interest, Sodelpa says its leader will now not be able to make it. Fusita Kote Wasawasa has more. Sodelpa's campaign tactics changed a few weeks ago when party liability Lysenia Ngarose was overnight pushed out of the way. An extremely media shy Rote Mumukepa suddenly became the face of the party, surprising all by also issuing a challenge over Renge Mbainimarama to a debate. A challenge she made at almost every given opportunity. If he was here tonight, we wouldn't be talking about it. For the record, made attempts to get Fiji First Leader to clear his appointments to take up Rote Mumu's challenge. Bani Marama agreed to a debate with the Sodalpa leader on FBC's Itaukei language radio Fiji station, followed by a live TV appearance on Friday, the 12th of September. We were very glad to host this because uh, we knew it's what the people of Fiji wanted. It would have helped a lot of undecided voters make up their minds, especially since we have 100% coverage in our six radio stations and FBC. Attempts were immediately made to get in touch with Rote Mumu and her team responded. They wrote back and they said, uh, send questions, uh, what's the format of the show, who's going to be on the panel, etc., etc. And uh, Chase Esikivo from Sadelpa uh, called me, in fact, and we had a discussion. And uh, he gave an indication that as soon as these queries had been answered, uh, the uh, Sadelpa leader, Rote Mumu, would agree to appear, on the show because, uh, to appear on the show because that's what she had wanted in the first place. However, in a sudden turn of events, the Sadelpa team sent word that Rote Mumu had declined to appear on the radio and TV shows, citing prior appointments and mentioning specifically a major Sadalpa rally on the night of the 12th. Obviously kept on trying. Uh, we even asked what would be a convenient time for Rote Mumu uh, Kepa to appear on the live debate and we were even willing to go to the extent of, of uh, uh, facilitating any date and time that was okay with her but uh, it didn't work out and it's really a pity because it would have been so good for the voters uh, especially since FPC does have superior coverage. With the intense promotion of this much awaited event on radio, television and social media, Sodalpa's refusal to send their leader will mean some degree of embarrassment for FBC. But with Rote Mumu not keeping her word on her own challenge, the embarrassment may be slightly more for the Sodalpa than FBC in this case. Vosita Kotemwasa, FBC News. The arrival of Fiji's new domestic carrier Inter-Island Airways seems to be taking forever. Although the airline has rescheduled its launch date to mid-November, it has not met civil aviation requirements and its one-year provisional license to operate domestic routes has expired. Christopher Chan reports. The Civil Aviation Authority of Fiji, or CAF, has stated that Inter-Island Airways has not made any progress since last year to acquire its air operator's certificate. 
The AOC is a compulsory aviation requirement which the airline has struggled to complete since last year. This means that the company has a month to meet aviation regulations, but like earlier this year, it is likely that Inter-Island Airways will not be launching anytime soon. Inter-Island Airways Chief Executive Bani Sene says they want to maintain a low profile until they complete a few things to be able to launch by the end of the year. Sene says they do not want to raise expectations at this point, adding they will be in a better position to comment before the end of this month. But the Air Transport Licensing Board reveals Inter-Island Airways license to operate in Fiji expired last year. ALTB Chair Ernest Datta says the license expired in November 2013 and although they have received an application for renewal, the board will review the submission once the AOC is completed. Inter-Island Airways received its license to operate in Fiji in 2012. Since 2013, the airline has struggled to meet aviation requirements, resulting in major delays to their operations. Whether or not they will be flying in our skies depends on how soon they can meet compliance issues. Christopher Chant, FBC News. The Chinese community in Fiji celebrated two important events in Suva today. China's National Day and the Mid-Autumn Festival provided an opportunity for the community to pay homage to their Chinese heritage. Sharon Lata reports the National Day marks the birth of the nation that we now know as the People's Republic of China. A large number of Chinese call Fiji their home. Many have lived here for generations. Their tradition and culture are two things they hold dear to their hearts. The Autumn Festival is one of the most important traditional festivals in China. It is an important moment when families get together to celebrate, harvest and to share joy and love. During the Mid-Autumn Festival or Moon Festival, which is the official harvest festival celebrated by gathering, Thanksgiving and praying, mooncakes are shared with the loved ones. And National Day is a significant event, even though China is thousands of miles away. Residing overseas, the Chinese people in Fiji still maintain the fine tradition of the Chinese nation. The Chief Guest Police Commissioner Ben Honewal says the Chinese community in Fiji plays an important role in the nation. Humble beginning to your communities over the past generations, you have managed to impact the world with your innovation and your influence in various sectors of society. The Fiji police do recognize the importance of the various communities in Fiji and in particularly the clustering of various races in our community. The Chinese community gathered at the Yetsen Hall in Suva with traditional dances and exchanging of gifts to mark the celebrations. Sharin Lata, FBC News. In an effort to strengthen women's groups in the Ra province, the Ministry of Women recently opened a new women's resource centre at Nativi village. Minister for Women Dr. Chico Luveni says the resource centre will financially empower the women and allow them to generate income from selling items including clothing and handicraft. Dr. Luveni highlighted that while the centre promises a new change for the women, it will raise awareness on their rights within the community. With the various developments being undertaken in the province of Ra, Dr. Luveni is adamant that the women will be empowered to create a difference in their own homes and communities. Now coming up in sports, could defending the HFC Fairbrother Trophy become too much of a burden for Nandronga? And the McCoy Bulldogs hunt for a second Vodafone Cup title.
So what was the question again? Oh, wait, why is it called the traffic jam? Well, you know, the reason is it's because I have two really cool cars. Seriously cool cars. And I love drifting, racing, <coughs> because I am fast and slick. And plus, I like to create a bit of traffic jam myself with a whole lot of great music. Bulubunaka, my name is Rio, your host and DJ, right here on the Today FM Traffic Jam every weekday from 3 p.m. to 7. Right here on Today FM, today's hit music. <laughs> Welcome to FPC Sports. Defending the HFC Fairbrother Trophy will not get any easier for the BLK Nandranga rugby side. The Stallions fended off a determined effort from Northland yesterday, but expect the remaining challenges to pose an even greater test. Chalindo Dakadaka reports. By Northland and clear away by the BLK Nandranga rugby side had a narrow escape against Northland with a 12 0 win in the second HFC Fairbrother Trophy Challenge. Officials put it down to the upper hand that future challenges possess over the holders. Because you get the uh, teams, uh, you know, to study uh, your games on a week in, uh, week out basis, and uh, they come in well prepared. So that is uh, where all the teams are, and uh, they've been watching our games, and they've been uh, analyzing and uh, putting a, you know, a proper game plan, that uh, strategy that we'll be able to, uh, to uh, counter the strategies that we do have. Suva will be the next team to have a shot at the prestigious silverware, and the Stallions are expecting another grudge match. Suva so, uh, this week will be, uh, uh, will be into their fourth, uh, fourth, uh, third week of uh, preparation. Uh, this is something that we are also expecting. We're expecting a very tough encounter. And uh, all we have to do is to try and minimize our mistakes and uh, try and prepare well for uh, expect the unexpected on Saturday. Nandronga last met Suva in the Skipper Cup semi final, winning by a comfortable 40 22 margin. But as Netasiri and Northland have proven over the past two weeks, the HFC Fairbrother Trophy Challenge will be a different ball game altogether. Silent the Kazak, FBC Sports. You can watch the replay of the Nandranga vs Northland match at 10pm on FPC TV. The Fair Trade McCoy Bulldogs rugby league side left no stones unturned in its attempts to reclaim the Vodafone Cup after two years. The Bulldogs came up against a formidable opponent in defending champion Sambeto Roosters, but the underdogs prevailed on the back of some stern defence as well as self-belief. Chalendo Dakadaka has more. The Sambeto Roosters side went into the semi-final clash against the Mokoi Bulldogs as favourites after an impressive preliminary performance. The Bulldogs were under no illusion as to the type of opposition they would face at Churchill Park. Heads off to Sambeto. They didn't give us a, an easy game. We believe that they are going to come hard because they have everything. Since they are defending champion last year, we were expecting the game to be tough. After conceding two early tries, the Bulldogs, buoyed by the presence of former Fiji Mbati reps Chono Wesele and Osea Sandrao, staged a dramatic comeback. It was nothing new. The things that we've been doing all year out, and uh, that's what we did today. We were just trying to punch them in the middle and see whatever comes, then take the option or keep going in the middle. So we see that perfectly, that it match our game uh, pattern perfectly. And yes, resulted in What's the win. The Bulldogs' performance yesterday would have been cause for concern to its final opponents next weekend. That the Bulldogs will play until the final whistle. Talent over Kavak, FBC Sports. The KBL Saru Dragons secured the second top eight final spot with a 24 14 victory over Nandera Panthers yesterday. The sore memory of losing last year's grand final will not be easily forgotten by the Dragons and will be a motivating factor as it hunts for its maiden Vodafone Cup title next weekend. Oh, well, uh, the victory tonight is all through God. Uh, the boys have been preparing well for the whole of the season in uh, the semi-finals. We treat, when, when we started off with this season, uh, we said we will treat every game as a final. Uh, we, we're happy with uh, what we've achieved. Uh, but this year we'll try and, try and make it different from every other year that we've reached the final. We'll try and take it to another level. Uh, we know the 
everyone knows. People say that Saru, every year that Saru, when Saru reaches the finals, nothing will happen. They show try to change that. And yeah, heads off to the boys for what they've done. Saru Dragons will meet McCoy Bulldogs in the Vodafone Cup Grand Final at Churchill Park next weekend. Brief showers were experienced over the eastern part of Viti Levu today. Fine weather prevailed elsewhere. Lambasa recorded the highest temperature again today, hitting 33 degrees. Savu Savu recorded a low of 28. Other centres recorded 31 and Suva 29. Tomorrow, fine weather everywhere except for Suva, who should get some cloudy periods in the morning. Now, for the further outlook, fine apart from brief showers of the eastern parts and interior of the larger islands, easterly winds 15 to 20 knots, moderate to rough seas. Recapping our headlines tonight, police investigate death of 12-year-old in Samambula. Ten days and still no word, RFMF helped detain soldiers' families keep it together. Sodelpa leader declines live debate with Fiji First Leader. Change. We need to support the party, but uh, the party not uh, helping us here. Eh, to uh, we staying very poor now. Okay, which party we supporting is the uh, family mama. Eh? We support that one. Uh, he should uh, help us. Eh? The one party who uh, take win, you should uh, help us. and videos on email citizens eyes at fpc.com.fj or share it with us via our Facebook page FPC News or if you're on Twitter follow and tweet us your news tips at FPC News or hashtag FPC News and to receive the latest headlines on your mobile phone take subspace FPC to 777 that's news for tonight I'll be back on Saturday but before I leave I'd like to wish all the fathers a happy Father's Day Remember, it's not difficult to become a father, but to be a father can be difficult. Until then, have a safe and productive week. Good evening.